So I had something on my mind today that I wanted to share, but I didn't really have time to make a full video. So I'm just going to be doing my makeup because I'm going out with friends tonight while I share a very controversial opinion and something that I've honestly never thought I'd make a video about. A little disclaimer if you're new to my channel, if this is like the first video you're seeing of mine, politics is definitely not something that I touch on on this channel and it'll stay that way but i really wanted to make this video just because i know obviously presidential election is this year in 2024 and there were just some things i want to say and mistakes i think i made in 2020 when voting i was only 18 at the time i was very young but just mistakes i made while voting and things that i did that i regret and I really just want to like bring those forward, bring those to light. This is such a sticky subject. Like, yeah, I don't even want to go there, but I feel like I really, really need to, and I really need to like clear up some things. So let me just kind of tell you my thought process about Donald Trump and what I would do if he ran again in 2024. Again, this isn't the politics channel. I really honestly don't care a whole ton about politics. I'm just not that person that wants to be talking about politics all the time. I more so like to focus in on what I can do to be a better person in my day-to-day -day life as opposed to things that are outside of my control. So that is why I don't talk about politics, but I used to be the total opposite. I used to just like want to scream my views from the rooftops and just like be super combative about it. And that's just not effective at all. If you're trying to get somebody to agree with you or get on the same page as you, belittling them is just not the way to go. And I feel like that was where my headspace was at for so long is like, I just wanted to belittle anybody who thought differently than me. And yeah, that was just not the way to go. So let me kind of tell you my thought process over the years about Donald Trump. So I was a very loyal Trump supporter for a long time. I followed him. I liked him. I liked that he spoke his mind, that he didn't beat around the bush. I mean, I just was obsessed. And I think that's even an understatement. I was moving here in 2020. And oddly enough, I voted by mail because I knew I was going to be moving to Wisconsin right around the election time. So I wouldn't be in Indiana to vote, but I wouldn't have like a license and everything that I would need settled here yet to officially vote in Wisconsin. So my voting had to be through Indiana. So I ended up voting through Indiana. That was like so ironic because Donald Trump was very against voting by mail and I had to do that. So yeah, anyway, when I first moved here in 2020, shoot, um, I went to this Trump rally and this was like very shortly after I moved here. And I was surrounded by a lot of people who thought just like me, right? Like they were Trump supporters. They were people who hated the Democrats, hated the liberals. And to find solidarity and like people that believe the same thing as you is a comforting feeling. I mean, especially I remember because I was new to Wisconsin, I didn't have any friends. And so I met a couple people there who um, we later hung out, but it was just nice to like be around like-minded people. And so I got a really, really close standing to Donald Trump. I didn't end up meeting him or anything, but I did listen to him talk and he was very close to where I was. However, the rally was brutal in a lot of ways. Obviously, if you are from Wisconsin or you've ever been to Wisconsin during the winter, it is very cold here. And this was only like October. So it, you know, it gets worse in the January, February months. I think it starts to get a little better in March, I feel like. But anyway, I went to that and yeah, it felt good to like be surrounded by like-minded people. But I also think that a lot of it was influenced from family. Like my family was very pro-Trump and they were just very combative in their beliefs growing up. Even I remember my parents telling me like Obama just got elected and he's bad when the 2008-2012 election happened. And I, so I like went around being like Obama's bad, but I never knew why. My parents never explained why or the process behind their thoughts. And that really bothered me. Like people, like I would be like, Obama's bad and somebody would be like, why? And I wouldn't be able to defend why Obama was bad. And so I just felt like I was a lot of times going along with my family, 
and speaking out of a place of ignorance. I didn't realize it at the time, but I now realize that, yeah, it, it was speaking out of a place of ignorance when I was talking about Donald Trump and, and whatnot. So anyway, I'm trying to make sure I have all this covered. Okay, I think I got it. So I did vote for Donald Trump in 2020, but let me explain to you why I would not vote for him in 2024 if that's the candidate that's going to be running. You know, I just put him on a pedestal for way too long. And then as things started to unravel, um, like the January 6th incident and all of the misinfor misinformation that was spread about that. And I also want to make the disclaimer, sorry, I feel like I'm all over the place, but I want to make the disclaimer that there are way more educated people to talk to you about this stuff. Like I by no means keep up to date with politics. I'm just speaking from what I saw. So the January 6th incident, which really put Trump in some deep, you know what, and I, I mean, at the time I thought he was a hero. I thought that all of that was good and, and everything, but over the years I've realized, or the things that he said and the things that I've heard him say have made me really question. I'm like, is this really a man of good character? And the conclusion that I've come to, um, based on my questioning of that is that I don't believe he is a man of good character. I don't believe that he has America's best interests at heart. I think he has his own best interests at heart. And I'm not gonna judge the interior of his soul, but I do think that I have merits to comment based on some of the things I've seen in the media. I know that his treatment of women isn't exactly great. I mean, he's been married so many times and that's another character flaw I see in him is I don't trust somebody, and I mean, this is an unpopular opinion and disagree with me, I don't care, but I don't trust somebody who has been married like seven million times and has like five different children from five different moms. Like that, uh, that's a little sus to me. That just shows me that as a man, you can't, or even if you're a woman and that's the case, that you can't keep a commitment, that you bail when things get hard. And I mean, again, there is so much nuance in that conversation. I don't know the ins and outs of his marriage, but I am saying that it's just sus given the things that he, or given the way that he portrays himself online and the issues that he's had in his personal life. I'm like, eh, that's like a little suspicious. Now I also get the side of it where when you're a public figure, like you have to do and say the right thing all of the time. And that is so exhausting. And I, I know that from being a content creator, but I think that sometimes, like Donald Trump, what I've noticed is that he gets things so egregiously messed up, like not even just making a mistake, but just so egregiously messed up that I just have a hard time having faith in him to run a country. I think that he is just very arrogant, very, yeah very arrogant and very like full of himself and kind of like, I think just needs a little humility. My brother was kind of explaining that to me when I was during the 2020 election. And I of course was very like not responsive to it. I was like, yeah, whatever. He's a good, he's a good guy, Donald Trump, that that is. And now I definitely see a lot more of what my brother was saying. My brother had a really good point when he just said like, hey, like Donald Trump has these character flaws that like do knock him down, so to speak. As time has gone on, and especially within the past couple of years, like, I, I guess I should backtrack a little bit that I met somebody um, actually shortly after I moved here that started kind of challenging my political beliefs about these things. And this was a really good Catholic friend and I'm so thankful that this happened because who knows where I'd be nowadays if it weren't for him. But he just started like gently kind of challenging me on these things and like being like, yeah, I voted for Trump because I thought that that was the better option of the two. But, you know, I, I do have issues with his character. I do have issues with some of the things he said. And at first, like I totally pushed back against this friend. I was like, whatever. Um, I was very stubborn at times. And I just regret that because like you can learn a lot by listening and really trying to understand the other person's perspective. And I just didn't feel like I was good at that during my, you know, first moving to Wisconsin period. Over time, I began to hear other people that used to be a fan of him actually kind of speak up and 
you know, a lot of pro-lifers specifically want him to stay in office because they're like, he's the most pro-life president. But I don't, I don't know that I necessarily believe that. I mean, there's, it's one thing to be against abortion. It's another thing to be holistically pro-life. And in the way that he lives his life, I personally find it really scandalous because again, like he hasn't been able to be faithfully committed to one woman for his entire life. And again, I'm going based off of what I've seen in the media. So of course there could be more to the story, but I, I don't know. I just question some things and question his treatment of some things. I know that like when your life is so public and online, people think that they know everything about you from just watching this one little snippet of you on the internet. And that's just not true. Like there's so much more to the story than what you're likely seeing. And so I, I get that. And I'm trying to take that into account here. There have just been so many things that I just really have to question that I'm like, um, that doesn't quite add up to me. Cause like, for example, when he overturned or well, no, he didn't overturn Roe v. Wade when he was doing all this pro-life stuff. Right. But then when he was recently asked within the last couple of years, like, would you support a full abortion ban? He said, oh, I think it should be left up to the States. And I was like, okay, like, so you're going back on your word. Like, it was just things like that that just didn't quite make sense to me. And I guess that's kind of my thoughts on him. I just have an issue, I guess, with his treatment of women. It just seems like from all the comments that he's made and me seeing things in a lot more clear of a light than I did previously, that he has a lot of his own interests at heart, not necessarily the interests of others at his heart. And I think he's so, like, he just, he also fails to listen. Like, one thing that I was um, very irritated about was in the 2020 election when he was doing presidential debates. What was I doing? Um, he kept interrupting and kept, like, just trying to defend himself. And, like, I, I just didn't see any humility on his part, like, any effort to kind of keep that stuff in check. Like... Just be humble, be able to listen, be able to rebuke and not in a, you know, typical Trump type of a way, but just like be able to say your piece and share your truth and kind of just let it speak for itself. I felt like he was so, oh man. And he just like did the Republicans a huge disservice when he did that. Obviously he's, he's wealthy. He's well off. I don't know how much of that wealth he's actually generous with. I think that he's pretty selfish on most fronts. And so, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of like all these things like piled together that I've just started to question. And I've just like, been like, you know, perhaps maybe Trump isn't the best option for president and that's okay. Um, I think that there's a lot better people to run for president. And honestly, he's getting like to the end of his life or pretty close, I should say where he's, you know, he's old. Like, it, there's just no other nice way to say it. He's getting up there. And I think that his life would be much better for him anyways if he didn't spend the last years of his life being a president. Instead, just spent it golfing and enjoying his kids and enjoying his life and donating his money. And yeah, like, I just think that his life would be so much better, I guess, as not a president. There's a lot that comes with being the president of the United States. And I mean, a lot of people expect you to do it perfectly, expect every president to do it perfectly, which just cannot be the case. Like no president's perfect, no person is perfect. And so I think a lot of times people, like they have this um, perception that pe anybody in a public office or anybody who's a public figure should do everything perfectly 100% of the time. And that's just not realistic. I'm trying to like hold grace for that. But I also just, I don't know, I can't let go of the things that I feel convicted about. And I don't, I would not vote for Trump if he ran again in 2024. I guess I shouldn't say I wouldn't. I don't know. I, it, it's hard for me. It's hard for me to know like if I even want to vote at all. I have thought about just voting third party, which I know a lot of people are like, that's the dumbest idea ever because you're just wasting a vote at that point. Mm -hmm. And I, I get that. I understand. But I also, 
I think it's important to stick to my convictions. And I know that at the end of my life, I will be judged for everything that I did. And I want to be able to say like, okay, I did the best that I could in the circumstances that I had in this broken world. And, you know, I think that that's okay sometimes. Like sometimes you're just doing the best that you can with the circumstances that you have, which many times are not ideal. But I also think like, you know, there's just certain things with Trump that I just don't want to support. And I, I used to, like four years ago, I used to be fully on his side, but I just, I'm questioning things now. And I think that's just part of growing up is that you start to kind of like be like, do I really believe that? Or is that just something like that I did because my parents did it? And I think that supporting Trump was something that I did because a lot of my family did. And I, you know, I, I wanna be able to think for myself. So I don't think that I'd vote for him though. So I know that that is like a really, con that would be a really controversial statement in my family. Like me deciding not to vote for Trump, I think my family would not like that. But Again, I think it's important to stick to my convictions, and my convictions tell me that more to the story that, like, I should really take into account when deciding if I truly want to vote for Trump. And, yeah, I just think I've come to the conclusion that I really don't want to. And so I don't know exactly what I'd do if, you know, it came between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. I'm not going to vote Democrat. I just think... And a lot of times with this stuff, like, is it really all that important in the long run? No. And I mean, that's why I avoid talking about politics in on my channels, because I don't think that it's really all that worth getting invested in because of the fact that a lot of that politics stuff you cannot control. Like, you can't control who's president. I mean, obviously, go vote and, and whatnot, but you can't control that stuff. And I think when we get all caught up in that and like the muck and mire of all that, we lose sight of what actually is important, which is being kind, decent, loving people, faithful people in our day-to-day -day life, as opposed to worrying about something that's so far removed from us, that's so far removed from our control, where we just kind of become obsessive over like a Satan, I believe, wants us to have idols. He wants us to put anything above our prayer life, put anything above God, because that's when he really can like have a grip hold on us. Whereas if you truly love God, you will have nothing else before him. And that's where I kind of realized and why I got out of politics to begin with was because I realized it was becoming an idol for me. It was no longer... Like, it wasn't ever about serving God. It was about being right. It was about being arrogant. That is not the life I desire to have. Like, I desire, you know, holiness. And I don't think that politics was adding to that. I think it was subtracting. All right, took a little break to blow dry my hair, at least a little bit. And yeah, get a little bit more ready. But I also found interesting, I was on Catholic Match and I was like searching for guys and whatever. Why does this door open? Shut. Okay. And there was this one guy I came across that had in his bio like, you know, I know it's rude to talk about politics, but I am a huge Trump supporter and think he won the 2020 election. And I just don't want to waste your time if you don't agree with me. And I was like, uh okay dude i just like thought it was odd because i'm like dude this is catholic match not politics match i mean i think if you definitely center your relationship around politics like that is a surefire way to have your relationship crumble to the ground the end goal of life is to get to heaven and that's kind of what i realized and why i don't really touch on politics in my videos because i don't see that as a pathway to holiness. I don't see that as a pathway to heaven. I see that as a pathway to the contrary, which is pride and sinfulness and uncharitable behavior on the internet. So yeah, I, I just don't touch that subject because I know that I can be prideful sometimes and I will just like end up right back in confession. So I often do not touch the subject. I often just simply avoid it, which I think is for the better, to be honest. 
And the thing is, is that I'm honestly surprised that when I first started this channel, it was never about politics. I'm surprised because I was like a very outspoken conservative at the time. And I remember, I think I did make a couple of videos about politics, but I mean, I never really touched on it too much because there was always kind of this conflict between my really conservative beliefs and gentle parenting, which you all know I'm a huge fan of gentle parenting. And I just feel like a lot of times people who are conservative are not really on board with no spanking and no punishments and they have this false idea that if you don't punish your child that they're not going to learn anything and that is complete and total crap but you know that's a different story for a different day but yeah I mean my channel like I originally started this to talk about gentle parenting and my sh channel has like shifted away from that I feel like this really is just whatever I feel like talking about at that particular point in time but I mean, I started this because I had a passion for dental parenting and I wanted to share that with everybody and, and yeah, share my passion for that. And then as time went on, like it just, you know, you kind of begin to do different things and you have different interests and different hobbies and, you know, different things that you're into. And that's okay too. Like you don't have to, you know, have one niche necessarily all the time. Now, I will say too that if you do have a YouTube channel, there, I feel like there are certain expectations from people that you will post in like this particular, one particular niche and you won't really go outside of that, um, which I've completely broken that rule. Surprise, surprise. I, I never follow those rules. But I mean, I feel like my channel has definitely taken off um, within the past year or so. It took me so long to get subscribers. Like it really did. And I mean, I worked at this channel for so long and made so much content and a lot of it felt so fruitless because I wasn't getting views and you know, it just felt pointless, I guess. But then 2023, for some reason, I don't know if like my content just became more interesting or what, but I've been getting a lot of subscribers and just, yeah, like I, I guess being the type of YouTuber that people want to see. I think I've got too much pink on my head. Let me blend this way. If you are somebody who is working towards a YouTube channel and you're like not getting anywhere and you really want to get somewhere, I feel you and just keep on going, keep on making content because someone wants to see your content, I promise. So anyways, that is it for today. I probably should get off here because this movie is starting at 6.45 and it is past five o'clock. So. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If this any of this resonates with you, please give this video a thumbs up because I want to know that I'm not alone in my thinking here. And please be sure to share the channel with a friend. This really helps to support me in the YouTube algorithm, so thank you so much for taking the time to do that, and I will see you guys in my next video.